Hey everybody, my name is Jose, and this is 365 Movies in 365 Days. How's everybody doing today? I hope wherever you're at that you're doing well, and that you're safe, and that you're enjoying the summer weather, or the winter weather if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. So today I have a question for you. Do you remember the first time you saw a Quentin Tarantino movie? Was it at your local cinema, or maybe a drive-in, or maybe you saw it at home, like I did? And which film was it? Was it Jackie Brown, Kill Bill, or maybe it was the more recent film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Or maybe you haven't seen any of his films, and maybe you don't know who the hell I'm talking about, and are living under a rock. That could be possible. Now, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood combines two events that have always fascinated me. The year of 1969 and the Charlie Manson murders. Now, let's start off with Manson. Do you know who Charlie Manson is? If you don't, then you need to stop what you're doing right here. You need to do two things. Number one, you need to get online and Google Charlie Manson. And number two, you need to get yourself a copy of Helter Skelter. Now, Helter Skelter, the book, not the song by the Beatles, is maybe the best true crime book I ever read. I read it back in high school. And to say that it changed me is a complete understatement. Helter Skelter opened up a world of, well, crime. Not in that I committed crimes, but that I read about them. It was that gateway drug almost to, you know, the Zodiac and Jack the Ripper and so many other things that in the time since then that I've consumed. And it left a huge imprint on me. It is still the best true crime book ever. I've ever read and I have reread it multiple times. Usually about every five years, I'll pick up a copy and read it through. And it always still fascinates me how the world just kind of, how everything just kind of happened, how everything had a moment where at any point it could have gone in either direction and we could have avoided the events of that murder. And the murder I'm talking about is Sharon Tate and her friends and family, but it didn't. And that's the weird thing about it is that at any point A or B could have happened and we would have had a different outcome. And that's almost what Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is about. It's a fairy tale. What if these events that we know very well didn't happen? If something else had come along, would we be living in a different world? Probably, maybe, but we didn't. And they did happen. And that whole Charlie Manson thing just still how he brainwashed these people into doing these crazy things, just, it, le it leaves me very baffled, even all this time later, thinking about it right now. Now, 1969 was also a really weird in and of itself. I mean, if I listed you all the events, all the big events that happened in 1969, you would say, no, that's too much for any one year to happen. But yeah, we had Apollo 11. That just alone would have been a highlight in most years, right? First Led Zeppelin album came out. Joe Namath led the Jets to winning Super Bowl three. You know, that famous one where he guaranteed that they were going to win. My favorite Elvis album from Elvis in Memphis came out that year. Midnight Cowboy, The Zodiac Killer, Chappaquiddick, Woodstock, Abbey Road by the Beatles came out. Monty Python made its debut. We had the amazing Mitz win the World Series. It was literally like a Billy Joel song. Remember that? We didn't start the fire. That's what it was. 1969 was an amazing year. And those are just some, just some of the highlights and low points in American and world history that happened in 1969. So you had these two cosmic forces you had 1969 on one hand and you had charlie manson and they all just kind of melted together to form one of the most bizarre and influential years in history and tied to that was charlie manson and the murder of sharon tate now going back to quentin tarantino so it was in the spring of 1997 and this was right before I graduated from high school. Now, in high school, I didn't have many friends. I can count you all the friends I had on one hand. And that was two. I know. I was pretty popular. And it was just a weird thing. Because when I was in high school, I'm going to let you know in on a little bit of things about me. When I was in high school, I played sports. And yet, you usually think of people who play sports as being popular. Well, that is usually correct unless you're a dickhead, which I kind of was 
And I still kind of am. But every once in a while, I would meet one or two people who just kind of clicked with me. And I had two friends. And one of them, his name was Dale. And that's who the story takes place with. See, it was in the spring of that year, like I said, of 97, when me and Dale watched Pulp Fiction at his house. Now, this is a whole three years after Quentin Tarantino had already made Pulp Fiction. But before he would release his follow-up, Jackie Brown. Now, here's how the story goes down, okay? So we weren't supposedly supposed to watch Pulp Fiction. Not because it was a violent movie or because it was, you know, too raunchy or the language was bad. No, 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 no. The reason why we couldn't watch it or weren't supposed to watch it is because neither one of us had a VCR. Yeah, we didn't have a VCR. So you wonder, well, how did you watch movies? Well, my parents had a VCR and it was in the living room, but it was always constantly being used. So if we wanted to watch a movie, we couldn't. I mean, in, in the times have changed and that sounds so crazy in today's times where you can just go on demand or you can turn on your TV and you have millions of movies in front of you. But back then it was a little different. You had to go out and get a copy of the movie and then you had to make sure that you were able to watch it. But like I said, that didn't happen. See, here's the other thing about this. And you say, well, Jose, your parents can't have been home all the time and, you know, been watching TV all the time. They weren't. They worked a lot. And that's where the mystery of life kind of begins. In that my parents, when they weren't working, were always recording their telenovelas, you know, their soap operas. And it was my job Sounds so silly now, but it was my job to be switching out the VHS cassettes during the day while they were gone after school, recording their soap operas. And so the VCR was constantly in use. I couldn't get, you know, a second of it because every few hours I would have to switch these tapes out to record that day's episode so they could watch it that night or the following day while they were, you know, at home. And so that day, Dale calls me up and says, hey, guess what? I got a VCR finally. His family didn't have a VCR. He came from a very much more, how should I say, uh, conservative family. And so things like watching like movies was kind of frowned upon, which is really weird because me and Dale would go on Saturdays to watch whatever was new at the movie theaters. And we always had a lie. We always had to say to his mom, hey, yeah, we're going to go watch such and such movie. It's rated, you know, PG or you know, rated G or whatever. And instead we, you know, went in to watch Scream or Wishmaster or Event Horizon or all of these other really much better, more interesting movies. But there came that call where he said, I have a VCR. And so I walked down the street and what movie did he have? But Pulp Fiction, a movie that I had been wanting to watch. Now, the other thing about that is the reason why I had been wanting to watch it and couldn't watch it even if I had, you know, a VCR to watch it on, was that where we went to go get videos at was this small little, you know, VCR or VCR, this little videotape, you know, store. And they only had the one copy of the movie. And so it was such a popular movie. It seemed like it was always being checked out. And so here was Dale with a VCR and a copy of, of Pulp Fiction. And so we set everything up. His parents weren't home and we sat in his room. And look, if this was a movie, you would have seen light, you know, rays of light shooting out from the TV and there would have been a choir singing, hallelujah, hallelujah, or something like that. And we watched this movie in silence because neither one of us could believe what we saw. It was so freaking amazing. And it still is. And every single time I watch it, it still gives me that tingling sense of this is bold. This is different. This is this is something that I don't think anyone had ever seen before. And they hadn't. Now, I've watched a lot of movies, you know, in the time since then. And I had watched a lot of movies before that. And while Pulp Fiction isn't my favorite movie of all time, and it's not even my favorite movie of 1994, it's the one that made the most impact because it was my first real grown-up movie. Now, what do I mean by grown-up? Well, it was the first movie that had a little bit, and I don't mean grown-up in like terms of like adult themes. I don't mean in that way. I mean, it was the first movie that left me wanting 
more dangerous. It was telling you a story, and then there was this other subtext of the story that it wasn't telling you. It just felt like it had to, there was more to it. It just wasn't simply, let's get from A to, you know, A to B um, as quickly as possible, and then to C and to D. It didn't have a straight line. It was all over the place. And not only that, there was this whole underlying, what was in the suitcase type thing that wasn't even part of the A to Z uh, lineup. It was, you know, A to 7. It's like, what? How the hell did this happen? All of that combined it for me to be like stunned when I saw this movie. We watched it twice. Okay. We watched it back to back. And then I went home and I don't think I ever fully recovered from it because that was at the point where I really started this whole thing about movies, you know, really kind of took over for me because this, and this was the time before the internet. It's not like I could go home and start typing in Google and say, Hey, give me what movies influence, you know, Pulp Fiction. No, for me to find this out took a little bit more ingenious work on my part. I had to go down to my local library Mm -hmm. And I had to get magazines, film magazines, you know, magazines that are primarily, you know, um, dedicated to film. And I would read articles about Pulp Fiction and I would, you know, start getting information about it. And slowly the titles started popping up that were influences on this movie. And so from that, I started starting to branch out beyond the movies that I had been watching at that point, which were like horror movies, more recent horror movies, I should say, action movies of the 80s, and just your general fluff pieces. I started branching out into darker corners of the film world. It was that gateway, you know, that led me to so many other strange and different and wonderful worlds. It was really a life changer. And I don't say that, you know, I toss that out um, for any movie. But it was. It was an event that really changed my mind. Now, Quentin Tarantino hasn't made a whole lot of movies that are as great as Pulp Fiction in the time since. Um, Jackie Brown, which would have come out later on in 1997, was a pretty good movie. So was Kill Bill. That was great. But since then, they've kind of been mm, good, is what I will say. They were good. Not great, but good. But I still have that moment, that one moment where I saw Pulp Fiction and it opened me up. And I think a lot of us have those moments. I'm sure if you're listening to this, either you remember when you saw Pulp Fiction for this time, whether you love it or hate it, or maybe it was the first time you saw Kill Bill or something, or maybe it was the first time you saw any movie that really opened your eyes to a different world, a different way of thinking, a different way of seeing things. And that's the power of cinema. It opens us up to thoughts and ideas that we hadn't pondered before. Now, like I said, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood opened up this weekend. I already saw it. I really liked it. It is a different kind of movie than what, you know, we generally see in the movie world today. You know, movies today tend to be very much like, let's get from A to Z as fast as we possible we can. They don't take their time to give the nuances, the characters, their time to breathe, to be alive. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood does that really well. It gives the characters time to live in their roles. Is it a great film? It's a good film. It's a really good film. And that's all I'll say about that. So thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. You can always find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, in any other place that you get your social feed from. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and just about any place that you get a podcast you can find us on. I want to thank you so much for listening to me ramble on today about about Pulp Fiction. I hope you have a great day wherever you are and you take care of yourself.